Oh, <laughs> sweet. Okay, I'm gonna get through this I'm like <laughs> Bernadette Peters got through the previews of the 2003 revival of Gypsy. I'm gonna stifle my cough. Was she sick too? Yes. Oh. <laughs> it was a rough time. Wow. But she gave the performance of her life. Is this gonna be the performance of your life? Yes! <laughs> Another episode of Two Game Mats, it's Matt Steele! It's Matt Palmer! And forgive me for being sick, but I'm gonna plow through. Yes. We just watched the Tony Awards yes. as we do every year together as we friends. Do. Well, I watched and Matt Palmer sat here. This <laughs> was this was a, a snoozer, I must say. For the Tonys we've watched, like not much. The most exciting thing that happened happened on Twitter. <laughs> oh my god. We'll get to that. We will. It was Honestly, amazing. Honestly, these weren't the worst Tony Awards. I didn't say worse. I said boring. Oh. <laughs> I don't think they were awful. It's just like nothing happened. They weren't the most thrilling Tony Awards. No. I mean, I will say there were a number of shockers. The band's visit got a lot more awards than I thought it would. Like, I knew it would win Best Musical. I knew it would win Best Score, which should have been aired on live TV. But whatever. Um, I knew it was going to win Actress. No one was predicting it to win Best Actor. I think most people saw a race between Ethan Slater and um, Josh Henry for uh, Carousel and Spongebob and then Tony Shalhoub won it. It was like, oh, okay. And Best Book of a Musical. The band's visit won Best Book of a Musical. Literally the only reason why Best Book of a Musical was broadcast live on TV was because the producers of the Tony Awards probably thought Tina Fey was going to win for Mean Girls and that Tina Fey was going to be on TV. And, uh, well... No, nope. another big shocker, which wasn't a shocker to me, was that Once on This Island was not predicted to win Best Revival. Most mm. people predicted My Fair Lady, but the entire time I was just like, Once on This Island's gonna. That was a nice performance. That was, the, I that enjoyed was a great that one. Yeah. yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. Performance. Yeah, that's a beautiful show. You should know that show. I don't. Yeah, you should know they it. They did it show. at my high school after I was. Or they did in junior high after I'd gone to high school, and I didn't go back to the junior high shows because like, who cares? They um, actually did that. My middle school did that the year I went really? to high school. Really? Yeah. Oh you my go. god. That's it's crazy. Got a lot of lives. I saw it though because I was still just like, hey guys, remember me? I was like, no, no. <laughs> Good luck, children. I loved the Meet the Plastics portion of the Mean Girls performance. Oh my god. <laughs> guys, if you saw our Mean Girls cast recording review yeah. of the album, we gave it a great review, a glowing review. And we were like, the one song we don't love <laughs> is Where Do We it's Belong? Where Do You Belong? And of course, that's what they did. And it was surprising. Oh god! And, and then they started it. I was just like, no. But then they went into me the plastics, and it was like, oh, this is a joy, and I'm so excited. And then they went back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I loves the performance um, by Katrina Lank, Omar Sharif, which is my jam. I, oh, you were just such a pissy pouty. They just didn't the do anything. <laughs> it's like a brilliant song. That she sounded nice and she was like describing a movie and like that's great. Oh my god, that song's incredible. Maybe in context. Oh my god. I'm sure yeah, in context. But yeah. the thing is like I listened to it for the first time when I listened to the whole song. Right. It's just stunning. It's and like, we were so stunning. We oh. were so long into the show and it was so <laughs> many like the carousel, like dancing performance. <laughs> I have not been excited until once in the silent I enjoyed. Um, and the band's visit song wasn't bad, but it just was like I, I mean, I say this every single year, single songs come across way better than medleys. Mm -hmm. Bands Visit did a single song. Once on this island, mostly did a single song. There were a couple bits and pieces of like, uh, like One Small Girl and stuff in there, but they mostly did Mama Will Provide. Um, Carousel also did only one song, but like I would have preferred a, uh, I mean, I guess they wanted to feature the choreography yeah. um, of Carousel, because that's really like the highlight. Oh, are we going to talk about Bruce now? Yes. <laughs> Yes, we are going to talk about Bruce now. Can you believe? No. Actually, I can believe. I can't believe it went on for that long. Oh, the, I, I, can't, I can't believe it went on for that long. The amount. All right, so Bruce Springsteen has a show on Broadway, I assume it's a jukebox musical, all his music. Or no, I'm assuming it's just a concert of him. Oh, I don't even know. I don't know. What, truly, I don't know what it is, but it's called Springsteen. And uh, so he was going to perform it after being introduced by Robert De Niro, who opposed, supposedly said fuck Trump, so we love that. Cool. <laughs> um, but then Bruce sits down on the piano, starts playing, like, I would say, a four chord progression. <laughs> <laughs> and begin speaking for what feels like three years. It's like your drunk uncle at Christmas has found a piano and is just gonna tell the he story. He knows of a vamp. He to knows. Play along. We, we were spits, uh, spits length away from the Catholic Church. No, just a football a throw. A football throw. I mean, I will say I have seen Bruce Springsteen live before sing one song at Carnegie Hall. Don't ask me how I got there. I somehow ended up there and so did Bruce Springsteen. And like, he is very compelling live. He's a very compelling performer live, but like, 
that audience was the target audience that I was at. This was not the target no, audience. It was and not. I love how like they had him on the show and had him on late to like appeal to a certain demographic, a middle America demographic, a white male heterosexual demographic. And right before <laughs> Bless you, thank you. And right before he went on, you had Robert De Niro screaming fuck Trump. So it's like, well, that demographic turned the Well, it's like off. sweetie, they weren't watching anyways. I, it just was a lot of speaking and then like two lines of singing, and then it was like we, we spent 20 minutes here. I know you could have you could have that the gay guy who wanted to speak for once on this island speak a little more. Yeah, they, they, they cut off several gays. Yeah, <laughs> they, whenever they, the second they person through those gays. Whenever the second person tried to talk out of like a company, it was like, no, goodbye. <laughs> We're not goodbye. doing it. Robert De Niro's coming on. We paid a lot of money for Bruce Springsteen. He gets to talk and do his spiel. How did you feel about the hosts, Sarah Bareilles and Josh Groban? Oh, I thought they were cute. Yes, that was you know, cute. I thought they did a nice PG job. I, I thought it was cute. I, I did. I have to say, I did like the theme of you know, people performing when they were younger and having, whenever someone would present, they would have a picture of them in like their school play. I thought that was very cute. I don't understand why they don't have Rachel Bloom host. <laughs> I, I don't get why they- Well, clearly Neil Patrick Harris doesn't Woo! know. <laughs> doesn't know who she is. Let me find the actual quote. Oh so man, we this was the so, best part of the night. Neil Patrick Harris is on Twitter being a bitch, watching the Tonys <laughs> and like being rude about them. And of course, he puts his foot in his mouth to talk about uh, Rachel Bloom, and the initial tweet was, Who is the woman in the top hat backstage at the Tony Awards? <laughs> Gideon remarks that she says like and oh my god a lot. I'm confused. <laughs> Ellipses. And Rachel Bloom responded, I'm a big fan of yours. We've met numerous times, and my husband, Dan Greger, wrote for How I Met Your Mother for five years. Notably, he wrote the episode where your character finally meets his father. <laughs> Iconic, Rachel's the queen, absolutely respond to him. And he writes back, indeed, well said, thanks for the reminder. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. How was backstage? It's just like, Did no. she respond to that? No. Uh, but he just really stepped in. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we've all been there, Neil. I mean, know. not that badly. I mean, <laughs> oh, and those kids. Yeah. That was a lovely, was lovely. moment. It's funny because lovely. I didn't realize that they were from Parkland High School until after it was done. I know. You're like, I thought that because, was great, but like, why were they there? I was because like, I have the kids from Parkland. <laughs> because, I, because I legitimately, like, was texting and coughing and, like, my lungs were on fire and I wasn't really paying attention to what was oh, happening. Sweetie. And I didn't get the memo. I was just like, oh, I because you know the theme was also like kids performing in their high school show. And so I was like, oh, they got a kid who they got kids from like the high school that the teacher who won the teacher award um was at and and, and I, I didn't put two and two together. I didn't That's hear okay. it. So you know, it but was, great they were great. They, they, were, they great. were living their dream. That girl who had the solo was living her She truth. was Good and I was her. just like, I bet those other kids auditioned for that solo. I, I wonder know. what that was. All like. those kids were mad. They're and, all like, No, they, they she's probably so good that like all the kids knew she was Right. Which at that note it was like, okay, all right, she's all right. she's the one. Not everyone in every high school can do that. Yeah. Hey, I thought the little Radio City song they did the reprise of at the end was cute. Oh yeah. And and, um, no, I, I think they did a nice job. I, I, I just, I just wish. It's kind of hard because I loved what the Tonys did in the past, like in the '90s and early 2000s. They would have, they would have an hour and a half, or like maybe an hour, where they would do the artistic awards, like set design, choreography, direction. Uh, lighting design, all that stuff, and they would delve into detail, like the intricacies of all the sets, all the lights, and everything. And that would air on PBS. And then they would have the actual ceremony on CBS, which mm -hmm. was literally just like all the acting awards and best musical, best play, best revival, and everything. So there was more time on the actual awards to have lengthy performances right. that would feel a little more meaningful, as opposed to feeling so rushed. Right. That's the thing is, like the Tonys feel so rushed, and it's hard to not to have them not feel rushed because there's so many awards that they have to give out and I get it and there's commercials and they have to have Bruce Springsteen to appeal to a certain demographic but like I liked that method that they would do before having the first hour of all the artistic stuff on PBS to get a bunch of awards out of the way and the to have the people who actually care hardcore about them, giving them a chance to watch those, and then the general American public watching the musical numbers and stuff on CBS. I don't want the performances to feel rushed, I want them to feel lived in. I want all the performances to be like an Omar Sharif, you know? I feel like I've watched this and I've gotten very excited about at least one performance. Like, there was like, waving through a window the first time I saw that was here, and you know, of course, when Hamilton performed that whole year was so <laughs> exciting. And of course, I loved Mean Girls, but the song they chose was just like, not the business. And it also happened so early on 
and I just was like, oh, I, I just don't care at all. <laughs> that was the I just thing. really don't care at all. Well, see, also, the good thing about having the first hour on PBS and then the rest on CBS is they would also delve into what every show was about. Yeah. They would have clips from the shows. They would they would talk about the stories. So, like, by the end, like, when I was a little kid, I didn't see any of these Broadway shows, you know, because my... They were expensive and we couldn't go up to New York all the time to see them. But by the end of the show, we, me and my brother would have shows we were rooting for because we would already feel like we knew so much about the shows just from watching the Tony Awards that we would be like, oh, this one looks good. I want to root for this one, you know, or I want to see this one. Whereas now there's less time to sort of delve into all of that. So you're kind of just like, oh, I don't know what this show's about, but look at all that dancing. Because now it's just kind of, I feel like the past several years it just kind of shows uh, whatever number has a lot of dancing in it just to sort of have that appeal and you don't really know what's happening like you didn't know what was happening in carousel but if you had no. some context and they explained what was happening you would probably know yeah but even i didn't know what was happening in great comet and i was intrigued oh, and you i didn't were know what was great happening comet, which was such an off-brand i thought that was nice <laughs> and I, I didn't know what was happening with waving through a window and i was like oh what's this song it's great like but there were just I don't, it just didn't, this year didn't have that for me. There was no one thing that I wanted to really cheer on. Once on this island was closed, that was a nice moment. I loved the mama character. She could really sing her face off, but. He? He? That's Alex Newell from Glee. What? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tell us below what you thought of the Tony Awards this year. Follow us on Twitter at Matt Palmer Music. It's Matt Steele. Both of us at Two Gay Matt. Get on our Patreon to get an extra bonus video a week for as little as one dollar an episode. Yes. Uh, on one of our bonus videos, we just reviewed the cast recording of Dear Evan Hansen. Yes. So if you want to see our reaction to that, go to our Patreon, which is yes. below. And we'll be back soon with a brand new Two Gay Matt. Bye, guys. Bye.